Sam Haroon, uh, Director of Automation at the Vineland Research and Innovation Center, and Tom Van, uh, Van Dyke, uh, Global Head of Sales and Operations at Letscore.com. Their presentation is called Improve uh, Crop Quality and Reduce Water Consumption Through AI. Uh, Hassan Haroon joined the Vineland Research and Innovation Center in 2020 as Director of Automation. Uh, Hassan oversees uh, Vineland's automation program with the goals of developing and integrating uh, robots, uh, automation technologies, and AI-based tools for the management of crop production, packaging, and processing and optimizing crops and production systems to improve efficiency and facilitate the adoption of automation technologies. Tan uh, Van Dyke is a global head of sales and operations uh, at the online data platform, letscore.com. Uh, Tan is responsible for the overall customer experience. His background as a former grower helps him to understand the needs of growers and en enables him to work together uh, with clients to uh, create optimal solutions. Uh, Tan states that, quote, it is not just the collection, uh, analysis, and display of correct cul cultivation data that enables growers, crop advisors, and investors uh, to optimize their yield, but knowledge transfer also plays an important role. Uh, this is what we do uh, via the principles of growing by plant empowerment, end quote. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, being with us, uh, gentlemen, and uh, take it away. Great, thank you. Welcome, everybody. Um, I see that uh, my video is still black. And Luis is on. There we are. Um, welcome. Uh, nice to be here. Um, and uh, in the combined presentation of uh, Vineland Research Center and uh, Let's Grow.com. And uh, we're going to explain you a little bit more about uh, uh, the smart decision system above uh, smart irrigation and uh, how we're going to tell you more about create more with less um, with the new techniques like artificial intelligence. But before we go to um, the details of, of the smart irrigation, um, we first want to go to uh, the challenge we have. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please, so some. And as we all know, is that um, in global, we have a huge challenge about fresh water. Um, as you can see in all researchers, agriculture is using 70% or 70% of the fresh water globally. Of course, a lot of this water is used in open fields and must be used because you need water to grow plants. But, um, we need to that, do that more efficient um, because we need to produce more food and there will be less available fresh water. So we have to be smart. Um, and why do we have to produce more food? If you go to the next slide, please, uh, Hussam, is that what you can see over here is in 30 years, we've got a, well, 25% growth of global population. And well, with that in the back of your mind, you can imagine that everybody who can do a little bit of reducing the water consumption um, and who is able to do that, in fact, has the obligation to do that. So with that in the back of our minds, uh, together with uh, Vineland, we, um, we started a, a project a few years ago. But before we're going to tell you about that, um, um, Faith, introduce us a little bit. Hussam, who are you? Thank you, Tan. Thanks for um, this kind uh, introduction. Um, and we're really excited about this collaboration and partnership that we're, we're having with Let's Grow. So um, as Fadi introduced us earlier, so my name is Hussam Haroon, and I'm the Director of Automation. The focus of uh, my group in Vineland is really to address the labor challenge in horticulture. So I have a, a group of about 15 on average uh, scientists, engineers, and technical staff that um, use their vision, uh, AI, and, and robotic expertise to develop these intelligence systems and uh, automation systems for horticulture. Tom, back to you. Yeah, and as Fadi also said, uh, I'm from Global Head of Sales and Operations. And um, 
we, uh, with my background as a former grower, um, it's very helpful to to uh, use that background and understand the needs of of a grower uh, and help them for real solutions because it's difficult in data uh, we can um, it's it's very difficult to figure out what you need what you want uh, and with it, having the right conversation we can we can help in that um, with it let's grow I support uh, or I steer a group of uh, 20 people of sales and operations and um, yeah, as you can see, Let's Grow is the world leading platform uh, in data for an online platform, exists already for uh, almost 20 years. And by collecting data uh, from different devices, um, even manual, um, combining that data, visualizing that data, and the last five years even analyzing that data, um, to bring information to the growers, we help them uh, to improve their uh, results. And as Fadi also said uh, in my introduction, um, it's not just about interpreting data. Now what we do is they do this with plant physiology knowledge, um, with plant empowerment as a basis. And with that we can, uh, as Let's Grow, via online uh, data analysis, we can really optimize results of growers. Up to you, uh, Hussam. Okay, thank you. So really what makes Valent unique in this space, our focus on horticulture, but also our cross-functional capabilities, where um, our engineers or researchers can work across the board with plant biologists, as well as uh, consumer insights and biocontrol to focus and address the labor challenge. We were looking at that labor challenge even before COVID became an issue over the last, um, since uh, earlier this year. Uh, but now with food security, labor challenges even a bigger discussion. So to get into um, this project that we partner with Let's Grow On, um, we're driven, uh, the work that we do in Vineland is driven by market input, by customer issues. So uh, we understand from the industry, from growers, that they spend about 240 acres, uh, 240 hours per acre per year on average on irrigating uh, decisions. The issues that we're finding out um, right now with those uh, challenges is that, oh, sorry, slide skipped it too much. I apologize. So the inconsistencies that they're seeing with um, with those irrigation decisions is really could be more habits or uh, or uh, intuition in terms of how they uh, take on those watering decisions. So they tend to be or err on the side of caution to basically overwater sometimes. And that could actually, excess water could result in, um, you know, for uh, excess water could result in diseases or even crop quality reduction or losses up to 5% from every first. So the other challenge with um, um, irrigation also is the skilled um, uh, growers that are hard to find and uh, the training required uh, and the experience required to be able to become a skilled uh, grower in this field. So that's also a challenge that the industry is facing. So the opportunity here where some of these growers right now can, um, where they're spending on just watering instead of um, spreading the expertise in different areas in the greenhouse is a challenge. Current solutions today do not address this challenge um, where we saw an opportunity to take it on. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the solution and uh, the experience behind it, right? So really what we do is um, our smart irrigation system does not tell growers when to water their plants based on what we decide. It actually learns from the growers irrigation pattern and it simply just replicates what they do and, and um, how they decide to do so, right? So a grower might pick a pot and decide to irrigate it and feels how light it is or touch the soil to, to gauge the moisture and consider things like weather and, uh, and the crop appearance. So they use their intuition and their experience to make this decision. What our system basically does, it's, it finds the pattern uh, in the data uh, in virus sensors or from the climate computers in the greenhouse, right? And creates a connection between the pattern and the data that we collected from, uh, and, the, and the, the data we collected from these sensors, as well as the irrigation decisions reported by the grower. So we take that data, we take the input and use machine learning, artificial intelligence, uh, to basically take that, create training data 
and uh, from the crop cycle, for full crop cycle, and use it to predict the grow decision for newer uh, subsequent cycles. So that's basically how the technology works. Now, in terms of um, how this integrates with the, with the, in the real life with Let's Grow solution, and, and Tom will take it and talk about how the customer experience and how they leverage that. So basically, if you look at, um, um, there's a pointer here. If you look at the, we take the grower irrigation strategy, we take that data, we input it, we train the, uh, the algorithm, we train the algorithm based on the strategy from the grower, take the input and the data from the sensors in the greenhouse, and we use that to basically um, uh, make the decisions. And Tom will talk a little bit more about how that visualization and how it's done as we go. Yeah, to give you a little uh, deeper insight, um, as Hussam said, uh, Finland created an, an, an AI model um, and uh, as we say, the engine of that model, that's, that's a central model. So that, what means is that the data going in to train that model is uh, growers own data. So we don't use data from other growers. It's a specific trained model um, from the grower themselves. So historical data will get into the Vineland model. But then you have a model trained on your crops, on your specific uh, uh, conditions. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it will work. So you need to have real-time data put in to get it uh, running. So that is where Let's Grow comes in um, and we connect the climate computer or sensor data. And that data is automatically pushed into that AI model. And based on the outcome of that model is put in Let's Grow again. And from there on, uh, a signal will be given to the grower oh now it's time to water that's basically the flow and constantly that's a process that's going round and round and round and when needed the algorithm is updated with more data or um, better data because data quality is also a very good reason to update a ai model well how can that look like um what we did is we just took a screenshot from a test uh, that run at Vineland Research Center as itself. Um, and what you see here is a dashboard that has been made by Vineland uh, in a way that uh, the growers at Vineland thought it was easy for them to visualize. We see a graph, we see some gouges, and we have a table for the overview on the right corner. Um, there you just see the data and what you see over there is uh, if you move a little bit up you see the start crop in that overview on the 11th uh, is a start crop and you see that coming back indeed to some where you are with the, the pointer the red vertical line that is the start of the crop so the grower enters I started growing this growth cycle um, and that's a signal for the model and for let's grow to push data into the model well and at that point uh, the crop is starting to grow and the data is collected and pushed into the model and on a certain moment there will be an outcome that there is an irrigation advice and that's where you see on the green line in this case and you see already that in the beginning you see in a short term there is an uh, advice and you see the, the red the distance between the red and the green line is not so big but the second one on the right you see that's uh, a day later instead of 12 hours later and then you see for the rest of the time you don't see so much or you don't see at all so there probably will be later on there will be an advice well that's the outcome of the algorithm well and i hear people think um yeah nice to see that in a graph or in an overview but how do i know um, do I have to check that graph every day? No, you don't. Um, we created a, uh, a, a signal that is sent via or SMS or email to the grower. Um, and then it's up to him in the end to decide if he wants to water or not. And that's a process. So what I mean with that is that um, you have to get acquainted and get trust in an algorithm. And you can compare it a little bit, and Hussam was laughing when I explained it first time in that way. Um, when an electric car, like the Tesla, it has an automatic pilot. 
and um, if you're driving the road and you press autopilot, for sure you're gonna grab the wheel or hit the brakes because you don't know what that car is going to do. So you have to do that in steps. And during time you get used and you get acquainted with how the car reacts. So you let the steer go and it drives in the end uh, automatic. In growing, it's exactly the same. Before you really trust that watering advice, you're through a few crop cycles and you see that the model is right, that when you follow it, then you see, okay, that's going. And in the end, you just do what it says. That's the experience we also have with the test uh, clients. On the left corner, you see some gouges where you can put in some, some sensor data, uh, some items in a different way visualized. Uh, you can easily see, oh, my gouge is red, so something is wrong with my sensor, for instance. This can be all custom made by the people themselves, so uh, um, it can be anything. Next slide, please, uh, Osam. Thank you, Tan. No, this is a great uh, example. So, um, one of the things that we do is um, once we've developed this, we need to test it. So, we've done some trials over the last couple of years uh, with this uh, algorithm and the scenarios and trying to figure out what are the boundary conditions. So, in this uh, example, in this um, trial, um, what we've shown here, if you look at, for example, uh, on the right side of this presentation where my pointers are, is so. Uh, the left graph is uh, the grower's data. So this is based on the grower uh, making the decisions and uh, for irrigating or not irrigating based on um, you know intuition and experience. Here is um, really um, driven by the basically the training from the grower. This is now the algorithm or the decision support system, uh, basically making its own decision based on this experience that it gained from the grower's training. And what you're seeing, if you look at it, it's a much more clear cut. So based on you know the temperature and and the, um, the quantity of water in, in the pot and because it's using sensors so real data no intuition it's able to basically make those decisions at a clear cut point now in this example we uh, we had about 650 pots of uh, campanula so where we ran the test and um, if you look at the bottom uh, picture here uh, we had also a reference crop so if you look at the two uh, examples of two uh, plants here you really can't really tell which one was actually grown by the DSS, the algorithm, or which one was grown actually by the grower um, uh, through irrigation. But on the left, the left side plant here was actually done by the DSS data, by the DSS, by the algorithm. You can see from the roots here, you're seeing a little bit healthier roots. And from those results, we're able to see that there's, there's definitely an improvement in, um, in basically in the, in, uh, in the crop production. And in terms of um, uh, there are no losses at, or there was crops that require to be worked or continually to be grown for, um, for basically after the testing. So we've shown that a decision support system um, with real-time data can produce results that are very uh, impressive. So the outcome uh, results to develop a value proposition for, um, for basically the end users, which is basically from our trials, we were able to demonstrate about a 5% decrease in losses, right? Improve core quality. And also, um, because now um, uh, uh, these growers can um, won't have to spend their time in irrigation on uh, that can be automated, right? Uh, so we do see about forty-seven percent decrease in labor for this specific use case, right? And also, again, because the you know the, they are not concerns of overwatering, water is being done based on the sensors and input as well as the climate computers and the, the outcome of the the data that we're collecting, there's a decreased uh, 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 amount of water wasted, about 15% from this use case. We want to claim that we're crop agnostic, but we're not able to test all the crops, but we think that at this stage, based on what we've been testing and what we've seen, we're about at least 75% of our crops, crops can be achieved with this uh, um, smart irrigation system. So to summarize, great consistency in irrigation and decision-making enables growers to spend more time on, their ta on other tasks, uh, that are not that not can be that cannot be automated or are repetitive, and it mimics the grower expertise. At the end of the day, we're taking the grower's expertise and basically uh, uh, imitating it again. So, um, what's next for this with the uh, Let's Grow? Um, 
to develop additional boundary conditions for any technology or any algorithm, you have to know the limitations of it. We're doing some additional testing in the coming months at two additional local Ontario greenhouses. We're grateful for their collaboration with us and let's grow on this. And um, with Let's Grow, they're looking at, we're looking at rollout in, in next year. And, um, and we're also looking for early adopters. So if you're interested, you want to try it out, get a feel of how it works, please feel for, feel free to reach out to Ton or myself. Yeah, and if I can uh, add something uh, to that, uh, um, part of the uh, validation tests is that uh, we are aware that um, for some growers, uh, purchasing additional sensors can be uh, difficult. Um, some already have them or others uh, uh, just want them. And um, to be able to provide a solution for each grower, growing pot, pot of plants, um, one of the validation tests we are doing now is that we uh, have adjusted the algorithm to do it without sensors, but only with climate data. Uh, it's looking good so far, uh, but that's one of the validation tests. Uh, the one with the sensor data is is done, is ready, uh, uh, and um, we can uh, implement that very quickly. So in that way, we can help each grower, um, because we realize that a lot of growers have different greenhouses and if you want to make a uniform product that that can be used by many people um, we have to make sure that these type of variations are possible thank you very much great thank you guys um, we have a, a couple minutes for uh, for questions and uh looks like we already got a, a couple here um so i'll just start from uh from the top uh, Deanna asks, how much data uh, or days or time of collection uh, do you need to collect from the growers to enable the system to operate fully? We need at least one crop cycle. That's, that's basically at least one. Uh, and during time, we'll tell if uh, it needs to have more, but in the test so far, we were able to do it with one full crop cycle. And uh, it's uh, it's important to uh, to think that it and, and to keep in mind that one crop cycle is, is usually the minimum, right? Yeah. Uh, the more uh, data, the uh, the better. Great. Um, the second question uh, comes from an anonymous uh, attendee. What sensors are you using for input, uh, and with what density? are using them uh, throughout the uh, greenhouse? Well, it's it's designed in a way like this. Sorry, Osama, I'm just gonna answer them, but uh, um, if you wanna add something. Um, it's designed um, that we are capable to deal with each water content sensor that's uh, available. So the option is at the grower themselves. Um, in which sensor they are willing or wanting to use. And that's, that's one of the core comp businesses also of Let's Grow to connect different data sources. So uh, that flexibility is at the grower. And the density also depends a little bit of the size of your crop and uh, your watering uh, possibilities. So if you grow on tables, you need two, three sensors or four sensors, if you have them on the floor and it's a big batch, then you need more. So that, that density is between four and a hundred sensors, I uh, would almost say, and really depending on the size of the batch. Thanks very much. Um, I'll ask uh, one question, uh, just uh, in the interest of uh, staying on, on time here, and uh, then I'll save the uh, rest of these for uh, discussion later on. Uh, so how do, you, how do you define, so this, sorry, this uh, question is from uh, Felipe. Uh, how do you define within the many growing variables uh, and features to be considered which ones uh, to define irrigation uh, and not in uh, algorithm? To, to, 
to say whether you want to irrigate or not irrigate in the uh, algorithm? So we use uh, statistical correlation and the plant biology, basically, to make those decisions with the algorithm. Okay, great. Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, as I said, I'll, I'll keep these uh, questions until the uh, discussion part, and uh, we'll move on to our, uh, our next speaker.